Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be using the Strathmore watercolor postcards to create a small scale painting that you can recreate and send to a loved one right now. So I ordered these Strathmore watercolor postcards online on Amazon, and I wanna say they were around $15 for 15 postcards. So not a bad price, and they were delivered on Amazon Prime, which is awesome. I'll leave a link down in my description box below so that if you are interested, you can see the ones that I got. And they most of the time come out of here really easy. <laughs> this one didn't, um, but they're just, cold press they are 140 pound and then on the back side they've got all of the things ready to go for a postcard so where you'll write your address and the stamp and then where you're going to write your little note or message so over here I'm going to start by painting just some flowers all over I'm actually going to use a smaller brush today because we're working with a smaller space so I'm grabbing my size four round brush and I'm gonna start with this pink. I know that this is quinacridone rose because this is what I always reach for. I've just got a lot of it on my palette right now. And I'm gonna be painting some little wildflowers here. And because we're working so small, you don't want to be so careful that it's hard to paint this small, but give yourself a little bit of grace. It's not going to be perfect, especially if you're not used to painting this small like me. I'm used to painting a lot larger. But using a smaller brush helps. Okay, now I'm just gonna paint these little daisies across the page and we're gonna just keep going across the page as we go. Starting with these little daisies and then we're gonna move to our next flower and just fill in the empty space as we go. So depending on where you end up placing your flowers, your painting is going to turn out a lot more unique to you. So I'm going to explain what I'm doing, but pay attention to the space that you've got as well. Now here, I'm going to paint these little like heart shapes and keep them really close together. This is going to be a longer, taller flower. They're not perfect hearts. That's just the general shape I've got going on here. And because I always love blue berries, I'm going to use French Ultramarine. And then just paint some little dots.
And now I'm going to switch to a different color. I've got a French ultramarine mixed with quinacridone rose over here to create a purple color. So this one, it's just like little lines that are all curved to come together in this little like rounded bowl shape. Okay, now I'm going to start adding in my stems and my leaves to try and fill in the rest of this white space. And I love using cadmium yellow for a nice warm, bright green, and I'm going to mix it with hooker's green. And then I'm just going to choose one of these flowers to focus on first. So I think I'm actually going to focus on this pink daisy, that's what I started with. And I'm just gonna bring my stem all the way down to the bottom here and try not to smudge any more paint. <laughs> but I'm just gonna bring this all the way down. And then I'm going to add in a few little leaves here. Okay, now I'm going to go in, same green that I've got mixed here, I'm just mixing in a little bit of a different color. So I'm mixing in sap green, and now I'm going to just move to my next flower. Oh, I just realized I missed a daisy, so I'll have to go back to that in just a second. And since I already mixed a different green into what I used to mix that, oh, and I'm getting my hand all over over here. I'm trying not to, but... Uh, since I've already mixed it, I'm just going to mix back in a little bit of this yellow and a little more of the hooker's green to try and get a similar color. But it's not going to be exact and that's okay.
Okay, now I'm going to do a green that's got a little bit more blue in it to try and break this up a little bit. I always love adding my cobalt teal. So cobalt teal, and then a little bit of hooker's green. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little water to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm actually going to put this greenery with the purple because I don't want the blue to be overly blue. So I'm creating the same shape essentially, but I'm just mixing up the size and the color so that it appears a lot different. But not much has changed. This is just a lot smaller than these leaves that I've painted. And then I'm painting more of them so it helps break up the, the painting. There's a little more variety happening. I will say it is tricky to paint this small and not get my hand all in the paint. I'm trying really hard, but it's it's tricky. Okay, now for this, um, I've got one kind of flower left. I'm going to use phthalo green blue shade and Payne's gray, which is my dark navy blue color. All right, now I'm going to kind of reassess and see if there are any little gaps I need to fill in. And I can already see right in here, I'm gonna add just a couple little uh, green sprigs here.
And now I'm just going to go back in and add a few little finishing details. And if you were painting a bunch of these, you could line up, you know, several cards next to each other and just keep going with your pattern. And that would be a really easy way to duplicate a bunch at one time. And I'll leave all the colors that I'm using uh, listed down in the description box below. And now this is something I don't do often, but I am going to do here. I'm just going to paint a little blue sky background. And then I'm just going to fade it down using some water. So I've painted the wash across the top and then just using water I'm going to blend it into the background. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this fun little project and I hope that you actually use it and send it to somebody who could use a little extra light or happiness in their life right now. If you enjoyed this video, will you please give this video a thumbs up and then hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any more videos. Thanks again for watching. Bye!